Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or hi if you're new. I'm doing my magical readathon uh, TBR today, so I'm so excited. I've never participated in this readathon before. The magical readathon has obviously happened a few years in a row now. This is the third year of Jean from the Book Roast doing it. Obviously, all of her links and how you can enter the readathon and all the information you need will be in the description box, but I've actually never participated myself. I've always heard such magical things about it but i've never but i've never set up a tbr participated done my owls or my newts so this year it is owls and it's based on the third year of harry potter so the prisoner of azkaban which is the book that is tied for my favorite place of my favorite harry potter book with the half-blood prince so i'm very just i'm so giddy about it so i thought i would do kind of a different tbr i thought you guys could maybe come along with me explore my bookshelves and um pick what i'm gonna read with me because there are a lot of prompts basically what you do for this readathon this is going to be the shortest explanation ever basically you pick a wizarding career off of a list that jean provided and i'll tell you guys what i picked but for that career you have to sit your owls and to complete your owls or sit your owls you need to kind of have the subjects that your career requires and then those subjects translate to prompts that help you pick your tbr so it's really really easy once you get into it so i'll just explain what my career is i'll put it right here too so you guys can see but i was really conflicted um i really wanted to be a hogwarts professor but i don't know if i wanted my april tbr to be that stacked and kind of crazy so in the end i did go with a magi zoologist a magi zoologist is a person who dedicates their life to studying investigating and protecting magical creatures it's a popular career with many possible subpaths. The majority of wizards decide to focus on a specific favorite species after a couple of decades of studying a broader spectrum of fantastic beasts. However, general magizoologists are also highly sought after by many institutions. So the key traits for this one are care, gentleness, and perception. And then the owls that'll have to sit is obviously care of magical creatures, charms, herbology, and potions. So I'm really excited and this year Jean actually added kind of add-ons to this world and to kind of complement your um, career or whatnot so I actually picked one of those or maybe two of those as well I don't know um, so for hello I'm all right how are you <laughs> So yeah, I decided to do two actually. The first one is Animagus Trainings. Uh, for this one, the owls you need are Arithmancy, Potions, and Transfiguration. Um, I thought this would be good because I already have potions for a zoologist, so obviously you can double up or you can choose to limit it to just kind of one prompt for both of them, which I might do, we'll see. And then the second one is Mer People Linguistics, which I just thought was the absolute like coolest thing ever. And for this one, the only owl you need is Herbology, which was also already on my kind of uh, prompts list. So um, without further ado, let's just go through my bookshelves, choose a TBR. I'm excited. I am so ready for just something good in the world and in my life. I also want to say I am on Team Ravenclaw. That sounds so weird to say, but like obviously the kind of competitive side of this readathon is that um, it's split into... Oh, Hi, Mr. Birdie. <laughs> um, is that it's split into your Hogwarts houses and that's how you amass points through your kind of houses and stuff like that and whoever has the most points wins like the house cup. So um, where are my fellow Ravenclaws at? All right, so my first owl is care of magical creatures and the prompt for that exam is hippogriff and that is creature with a beak on the cover. So let's find one. All right, I'm gonna start first with my little bookshelf, um, obviously because it's the Harry Potter shelf, but um, I do typically read like Harry Potter every year. Chamber of Secrets has a beak on the cover, <laughs> but the one that I need to reread if I'm going in order is The Prisoner of Azkaban, which literally has a hippogriff on the cover. This is the prompt. This is the prompt. So this is gonna be an option because um, I just, I really want to read Harry Potter again. That's so lame to read it for the magical readathon, but like, I really do want to. So that's our first option, but we will find others. I feel like there's no beaks. Is there a beak on this? No. No, is there a bird on this? Oh, there is. There is a bird on this. <gasps> okay, that is an option. Mm. Oh my gosh, there's literally a hippogriff on this as well. Oh, this is working out so nicely. I was scared I wasn't going to have any for this prompt. Um, I don't really want to read that all in one sitting. That one's an encyclopedia. Um, let's see. I don't believe that these have any. I really want to read Young Romantics, but there are no beaks here. Okay, if you are unacquainted with my bookshelf, let's get introduced. These are all classics of literature, English literature. Well, not all English literature, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's find some beaks. I really would love to read The Inferno. I would, uh, the Inferno does not have beaks on it. 
Let's see. I would love to read A Midsummer Night's Dream. There's nothing on that. <laughs> Damn it. Um, The Italian. Nope, no birds here. Sense and Sensibility. No birds here. Okay, nothing on the top shelf has a beak on it. Let's see. What haven't I read here? What haven't I read? Beyond Good and Evil only has roses on it, which is sad. Okay, Lady Windermere's fan. No, nope, no beaks, no beaks. No beaks? No, no beaks. <laughs> um, <gasps> the sun also rises. <gasps> Guys, we did it. We did it. There's one tiny minuscule bird right there. I'm gonna call that a beak and someone can fight me about it. The sun also rises is going in our options. This is so much fun. I really encourage you guys to do the magical readathon. You can do it like any chill way you want, but this is just like fun. I haven't done a readathon in months, if you can't tell by my bubbling excitement. Okay, we're gonna move on to classical studies. Ignore the Gryffindor scarf. I'm not in Gryffindor, just so we get that out there. Um, one of the worst Hogwarts houses. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, Greek myths. Does this have a beak on it? No, it just has a minotaur. Does this have a beak on it? No. Addis the Vannies, please. No. <laughs> um, what else is left? Does Plotus have a beak? Oh, but a really sharp nose, though. We've made it to adult fiction. Okay, let's see. I have not read this. There's no beaks on that. I've read this red, red, red. Does this have? No. A lot of ponytails, though. Okay. Um, I would love to read this. Mm, no. No beaks there. Okay, I would adore reading The City of Brass as well. Ah, really beautiful cover, but no birds. Wait. <gasps> no. This is huge, though. This is so big. Guys, it has a bird on it, but I'm honestly gonna leave it there. I don't, I don't want my April TBR to, to kill me. Um... I would love to read the second dragonfly in amber. No beaks. <laughs> no beaks. Okay. <gasps> Does Nevernight? Uh, I know there's like crows and stuff in Nevernight. No? Really? <laughs> oh, I just got the bone clocks. There's no beaks there. Red, 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 red. All right, we have one more shelf and that is this guy to check for beaks. Oh, the silence of the girls. Oh, <gasps> there's birds. Guys, we have birds with very long beaks. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I don't know if the buddy read for this is gonna happen in April, but it has beaks on it, so I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna shoot my shot, and I'm gonna ask them to read this with me. Okay, so far we have Silence of the Girls, The Sun Also Rises, Chinese Myths and Legends, and Harry Potter with beaks on them. Um, ooh. Okay, we'll come back later. You'll see my final decisions <laughs> when I'm done. Okay, my second uh, owl for a magic zoologist is Charms, and to sit Charms, your prompt is Lumos Maxima, a book with a white cover. This one might be a little bit easier, so let's do it. Okay, Young Romantics finally has a white cover. I think I can do that. Option number one. All right, we're back to classics. I know none of these have white covers. I know it in my bones. <laughs> um, Oh my gosh, Yates. Yates has a white cover, and so does Lady Windermere's fan. Okay, they're both coming, because I can't choose. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, they're all white. Oh no, guys. I do want to reread Letters to a Young Poet. This is my favorite, um, I don't know what to call it. This is my favorite collection of letters ever written in the world. I have two translations. Um, I want to reread both translations. <laughs> Damn it, this is so hard! Okay, let's do Stories of God. I don't know. All the classics. I read this. Oh, if not winter, she's coming. This one's really easy. Okay, my next owl is Herbology, which the prompt is Mimbulus Mimbletonia, uh, a book that starts with an M. Okay, we're gonna shake things up. We're over here now. We have the Venus Throw, the Amber Row, the October Horse. Nope. I've read all of these, but I would be down to reread. <sighs> Matilda. So good. Okay, no M, no M. I've read The Mysterious Benedict Society, which was really great. Um, okay, we have some sci fi. No M's. No M's. And no M's. Random pack of glitter. Um, Skyward, unfortunately, that is not an M. 
Untold Legacy, The Raven Boys. Oh, guys, what is happening? The Eye of the World, uh, The Invasion of the Tearling M. Where are my M's at? Not here. Okay, wait, I literally just thought of the perfect one. Yes, Medea, I can, yes. Okay, that's going in. Okay, that's definitely going in our option. Oh, and Macbeth. Oh, guys, this one's working out really well. Yes. Okay, so our next owl that I have to sit is potions. That is the last owl for Magic Zoologist. And that prompt is Shrinking Solution, which is a book under 150 pages, which, bless the gods. Okay, let's see. Under 150, Beyond Good and Evil is over. The Crucible is 130 pages. <laughs> is that it? Just the Crucible? I feel like it might have to be just the Crucible. So for Animagus training, the first owl you have to sit is Arithmancy. And the prompt and the prompt for Arithmancy is magical qualities of the number two, balance and opposites. Read something outside your favorite genre. So my favorite genre is Dark Academia and historical fiction. So we shan't read those. My favorite genre is definitely not nonfiction. So I could read the Italian dictionary. Or I could read this, which looks fun. Um, I don't, I'm not really feeling, I'm not really feeling it right now. I just want to read Harry Potter. <laughs> so far, we have no YA in <laughs> this TBR um, or middle grade. So I know I might be doing something with this book in April. Um, so this one might be an option. I'll see, though. I have to talk to someone about whether something is happening with this book or not. <laughs> um, and then what could be another option? Seeker, I have not yet read by Arwen Ellis Dayton, so that might be an option. Um, because YA definitely is not my favorite genre. But, oh, The Enchanted Sonata, though. The Enchanted Sonata is one I've wanted to read for forever. So maybe these two. Okay, these two will be my picks. The other subject for Animagus was Transfiguration, and that prompt is an Animagus lecture a book or a series that has shape-shifting in it to some capacity. This one's gonna be really hard like obviously we have a werewolf in here so that could work. Um, I don't think we have anything in non-fiction probably because it's non-fiction and... Oh <gasps> wait I have the perfect... Yeah, guys. Yes. <laughs> I think this works perfectly. I am so excited that this can go on this TBR. I, I literally want to read this one. No other options. Um, it's going on. I have a lot of options for potions, and then I already have a lot of options for herbology, um, which is the one you need for more people linguistics. So I will choose from all of these books, and I will get back to you. To get this straight, um, these are my options for care of magical creatures with a beak on the cover. These are my options for charms, a white cover. Um, these are my options for herbology, which is titles that start with an M. These are my options for arithmancy, something outside your favorite genre. This is my option for potions, a, pay a book under 150 pages, and this is my one option for transfiguration, a book with shape shifting. So, if you recall, I do need two of herbology and two of um, potions. Okay, so for the beak on the cover, I'm gonna eliminate these two. And then it's gonna be between these two. For the white cover, I'm gonna eliminate Young Romantics. I'm gonna move Lady Windermere's fan to that category. <laughs> um, and then I'm left with these three. For this, oh, for potions, I'm gonna eliminate Macbeth. And then I'm left with these two. All right, I finally made all of my choices and they're kind of a lot but I'm really excited so let me just run through it really really quickly and show you guys what my magical readathon TBR is going to be to sit my owls to become a magi zoologist in my third year at Hogwarts as Ravenclaw. Okay, the first one is obviously Care of Magical Creatures, but um, this one is hesitant just because I haven't asked anyone if they actually wanted to buddy read it in April, but I, I'm i guessing they're gonna be good sports and say yes. First book in this readathon that I picked was The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This was actually gifted to me by Carolyn for Christmas. I have her note inside. It's lovely, thank you so much, thank you again. Um, so if you don't know, The Silence of the Girls is a retelling of the Trojan War and it kind of works its way around 
on the lives of the women who are basically silenced in the Iliad and don't get much of a story. I know we're really following Briseis in here, who is kind of a prisoner of Achilles and taken by the Greeks, and all the other women who obviously are silenced in and throughout the Iliad. So, I've heard really, really great things about the silence of the girls. Um, it's obviously not the silence of the geese, because... So this is the first book that I picked for this readathon. For some reason, the buddy read doesn't happen. I will be obviously reading Harry Potter and The Prisoner of Azkaban because I just, I had to put it on here. I love it so much and I just, I really want to read it. It's the third year of the readathon, third book, and um, this is kind of my dual option, if you will. So for charms, I ended up picking, if not winter, uh, Fragments of Sappho, translated by Anne Carson. Um, and these are really, really short fragments, you guys. Like, most of the pages are that long and they just have the ancient Greek and Carson translation on the other side which I'm really really looking forward to. I thought this would be a relatively quick read even though it is a little bit lengthy. I know they are just mostly fragmented lines that have been discovered and have been attributed to Sappho, uh, the Greek poet, the goddess, the oh, the tenth muse. If you don't know, Sappho hails from the Isle of Lesbos where she lived I think around 630 BC and she wrote so much poetry, so much obviously which does not survive, but Anne Carson has translated the fragments or some of the fragments which do survive. So that is the book that I picked for Charms since it has obviously a white cover. For Herbology, uh, which is the prompt with the title that starts with an M, I decided to pick Medea and Other Plays by Euripides. I'm really excited by the amount of classical studies works that are on this TBR, so um, yes. But Medea and Other Plays has Hippolytus, Electra, and Helen in the rest of it. This will be my first time reading Euripides. He is the last of the three kind of major Greek uh, tragic plays playwrights that I haven't got around to actually reading myself. Obviously I've read snippets and lines but never the whole plays in their entirety so I'm just really excited to get into these. Yeah, it's gonna be really tragic, really fun, and I'm just really excited about this one. For Potions, which was a book under 150 pages, I ended up switching a lot of things around and adding books to different categories because they just fit and worked out. So in the end I picked Lady Windermere's Fan by Oscar Wilde. This is perhaps the shortest play ever. I guess Act Without Words by Samuel Beckett would be the shortest play ever, but um, I have talked about Lady Windermere's fan pretty recently on my channel. I keep saying I want to read it, so I guess it's just going on this TBR. We're following Lady Windermere, who's kind of just this really upright, strict, moral character, but throughout the play I believe she gets into all sorts of trouble. I just smacked myself in the face, and she kind of just goes around um, with this persona and this moral code in her head, and Oscar Wilde will obviously challenge that, be witty about it, and just, I'm... I'm excited to get into more of him, so um, this one is going to go on here too and will hopefully lighten my load a little bit. So those were all the books that I'm going to read to fulfill my magizoologist career, but um, for Animagus Training, the first one for that was Arithmancy, I did end up picking Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. This is the only YA or middle grade on here. Um, I think something might be happening with this, but if not I will switch it up and show you another prompt that I have ready, um, just because I don't know if... I don't know. I don't know what the plans are yet. It's all up in the air, but I'm very excited. I think everyone knows who Anne of Green Gables is. I can't believe I've never read this book, so this is the one that I chose for Arithmancy. If somehow that doesn't pan out, I decided to have a little other option waiting, which is Chinese Myths and Legends by Chen Lanshan. You guys know I always put this on like books that I really want to read right now and then somehow just don't pick it. So um, it's also going to go into my prompts for Arithmancy if Anne of Green Gables doesn't pan out. But this is just a really nice, beautiful, illustrated copy of a whole bunch of Chinese myths and legends. I will not complain if I have to read this because I really, really want to. The other prompt for Animagus Training was another potions, which I decided to also kind of double up. I don't know if I'll get to them all, but just so I have two options in case I want to expand my TBR, I chose Stories of God by Rilke. You guys know I've also been talking about this pretty recently, so I just decided to put it on here. There are a bunch of short stories by my favorite person in the world, my favorite poet, my favorite author, Rilke. Um, so this is going to be kind of another option for uh, potions that I'm going to try and read. So. The last prompt for Animagus Training is Transfiguration, and I chose Ovid's Metamorphoses. Obviously, you guys saw this was the only option in this category. I've been wanting to read this one for forever. This is a whole bunch of Greek myths, uh, rewritten and reworked by the Roman Ovid, and he focuses solely on myths of transformation, transfiguration you could say, shape-shifting or a change in state from one to another, so people turning into trees, people turning into animals, and um, 
yeah, I'm just really, really excited. This is maybe the book I'm most excited to read, except for, they're all good. This is a really good TBR. I'm really proud of myself. I'm really just excited about all these books, so we got all of it. And finally, the last book on this TBR for Mer People Linguistics, which is just fabulous, um, was also another Herbology prompt, so that was another M. So I did go with The Merchant of Venice by Shakespeare. Um, I cut out Macbeth just because I think I want to read Macbeth around Halloween or something like that, but um, I did go with The Merchant of Venice. I have no idea what this is about, which I love. I want to go in blind. I want to go in with no background knowledge. This is the really pretty Folger Shakespeare Library edition, and um, yeah, so this is another kind of short one. It has a lot of notes in it as well, so I'm hoping this is a TBR I can do, but this is the last book! Okay, here they finally all are. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books total with two or three other options. I do have Yates just sitting lonely here because I really want to read it, but um, I'll probably pick up some audiobooks this month, so yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to read all these. I'm gonna try my best. I'm just really hoping and praying and hoping some more that my concussion will go away and that I'll be able to fully read at 100% of my brain's capacity very soon, which is why I've created this TBR. So definitely let me know what your guys' TBRs or what you're reading, or if you're doing the Magical Readathon, let me know. I would, I'm honestly really, really curious what you guys are reading and also what careers you're doing, if there are any fellow Ravenclaw magizoologists or just magizoologists in general. Um, let's talk. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This was so fun. Once again, all the info will be down below. Um, it's just gonna be really fun. I'm really glad Jean's doing this, especially right now with all the crazy things going on in the world and people just need something. First of all, people need something to do, but second of all, it, it's just really fun and it's gonna be like, I think it's gonna be a really good time, so I'm really excited. She's put so much work into it and, um, I'm gonna try to put as much work in with my TBR. So, thank you for being here. I really hope you guys are just safe and healthy and happy wherever you might be on this planet and, um, yeah. I will see you guys in my next video. I will also be doing weekly vlogs, obviously, so if you want to see if I manage to read all these, they will, the trials that I will go through will be in those vlogs. So, um, I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao.